at my last parish, I had a elderly parishioner whose son lived on the West Coast. And every year he would come home for his mother's birthday. And she would bring him to church with her. Well, after a few years, oh, and it was always on the last Sunday of, or the last weekend of September, which of course is the day that I give the State of the Parish Address. So after a few years, he said to his mother, he said, you know, you really need to find a different parish because all that priest ever talks about is money. I guess if you show up once a year, that's the one you get. The Archdiocese, of course, demands that I give an accounting to you of the parish finances within 90 days of the close of our books for the fiscal year. Today is day 91. But before I get into the numbers, let's have a little context. What, what are we about? What does the money you put in the basket do here at St. Peter's? What is a parish all about? Well, first and foremost, what we're doing now. Worshiping our God in the liturgy. Secondly, we are called to educate our young in the knowledge and practice of the faith. And so we operate a school and a CCD program. We are called to provide opportunities for adults to broaden their faith knowledge and deepen their faith. And indeed we do. We initiate new members. In fact, at the 9 o'clock Mass this morning, we welcome them formally with the rite of acceptance into the order of catechumens. And finally, we are called to reach out to the sick, the hungry, the naked, and the homeless. So let's talk for a few minutes about our worship. Well, in the past year, we continue to improve our music program. We've increased the space and the orientation of our choirs so that their voices can be heard across the church. We've added instrumentation, allowing our non-singing musicians to use their God-given talents for the good of their brothers and sisters in Christ. We've organized new music groups. That's who's singing right now is a new group, a family choir. And finally, we completed the renovation of our Adoration Chapel so that people can come to a nice quiet room that is of beauty where they can be with the Lord in the Eucharist. When we look at our, our charge to educate our young, well, that's an easy one. I hired a new principal and a new preschool director this year. We reinstituted the eighth grade overnight trip to Chicago to give our eighth graders a, a richer educational experience before they go to high school. We've sponsored numerous adult education opportunities, most notably those of our own Joe Hand, his Bible studies and his studies of the saints. Andrew, our music director, gave a music workshop for those so inclined. We continue our Advent and Lenten speaker programs. And finally, we hired new youth ministers after a 20-year absence. In short, in addition to those, there are 55 different ministries listed in our guidebook. Now, I would be remiss if I left out the ministries of outreach, like St. Vincent's in our food pantry. They're in here as well. All right, that's, that's our context. This is what we're about. This is what your money goes to. So now, let's talk about numbers. In the back of church, you will find a single sheet of paper. One side is the parish, the other side is the school. We 
broke it down, we summarized it into eight to 10 very broad categories for comparison reasons. If you would like a more detailed summary, it will be on the website within the next week. And if you would like even more detail than that, please call the parish office, make an appointment with Shirley. She will print out anything you wanna see, all the way down to transaction level detail. But I must warn you, if you would like transaction detail for the whole year's worth of books, I'm going to have to charge you for the paper. <laughs> when we look at our parish income, of course, as anyone would know, 85% comes from the offertory, what we put in the basket. Part of the problem we have is that last year we budgeted $1.2 million for that amount of income. We fell short of that by 10%, $120,000 less. Now, there's a reason for that. In December, you may recall that I came up and I announced to you that for the first time in 20 some years, we were out of debt. We owed no one, not even the archdiocese. And your response was, to decrease your giving so that the very next week our collection dropped $2,500 a week and stayed that way all year. If you do the math, $120,000. So where does the majority of that 85% of our income go? You can pretty much guess. 47% of it goes to pay salaries and benefits. It cost us in insurance benefits for a family, not a single person, but someone who has family coverage, it cost us $11,000 a year. That's the insurance premium that we are required to pay. So, every two weeks, we pay out $95,000 in salaries and benefits to our 108 employees, ranging from the custodian, who's making just a little more than minimum wage, to some of our senior teachers, who because of their seniority make about twice as much as I do. The next expense after wages is what we send to the archdiocese. Every parish in the diocese is required to send 11.4% of their income to help the diocese with their diocesan ministries that we take full advantage of. Our number three cost is maintenance. $150,000 went to our maintenance needs. Now, this is, this is the maintenance that just keeps things going. The custodians, the, the washing the windows and replacing light bulbs and mowing the lawn and all the things that you have to do to maintain a property. But interestingly, with all of that being said, when you do the math and you subtract the income from the expenses, you find that we actually spent $208,000 less than we brought in. In regular terms, that would be called a profit, $208,000. But wait, there's more, or less. Because if you look on the school side, you will see the same basic things. Tuition and fees is the majority of our income, and salaries and benefits is the majority of our expense. But they were not so frugal and they posted a $217,000 loss. So 208 positive, 217 negative, you can do the math. Basically, we subsidized the school to the tune of $200,000, which is perfectly fine because it is a ministry of education. We would not be a good parish if we didn't somehow contribute to the health of our school. The bottom line is, is that we brought in basically exactly what we spent. And when I was a kid, my mom and dad called that living paycheck to paycheck. 
So when I looked at the numbers and started looking at, at this, this phenomenon of, of people putting money in the basket, I wanted to know just who was, was doing this. And it was interesting to me, we have a printout, we're able to figure that out. So first I'm going to set the stage for that. According to our computer, we have 2,359 registered families. 2,359, which equates to 6,659 members. Okay, 60, about 6,650 6, members. Of that 6,600 members, on any given weekend, we have about 1,650 attending five masses. That's only 25%. 25% of our registered parishioners come to church on any given weekend. Now the problem is that it's not the same 25% every week. Now there are some of you who come every week, like clockwork. There are some who come every other week. There are some who come once a month. There are some who come once in a while. There are some who come twice a year. So you see, with that mixture going on all the time, I never know what 25% I'm talking to. So that's one thing. So we looked at envelope usage. 56% of our parishioners who receive envelopes don't use them or they pay nothing. 56% of our parishioners pay nothing to the support of the parish. The largest group that I found among the groupings is a group that is in the $20 to $50 range per week. The largest group being the $20 range. But if I take that group of three, $20, 30 40 $50, that, that per, month, to per week, they make up 10% of the people who are using envelopes, they account for 36% of our budget. So I thought, well, if this is how it's going with our, with our donations, what's it like on the non-money side? What's it like on the non-money side? What are, what's our volunteer situation? And I talked to my department heads and, and other folks not counting liturgical ministers, they estimated that we have about 300 volunteers in the parish out of 6,650. But let's not use that number. Let's use the family number. If one per family, one person per family, 2,359 people, if one person out of that family was donating their time, that would be 10%. At one per family, it's 10%, more or less. So once again, 10% of the people are doing the manpower work for the rest of us. So what does all this have to say about the state of our parish? Well, one of the things that we continue to look at, that's our, that's our operating budget. Now we have to talk about the things that we could be doing if we had the extra money. As I said, we were living paycheck to paycheck. We've only spent $150,000 on maintenance during the year. And you'll remember that our mortgage payment was $25,000 a month. And you remember in December when I gave the speech, the wonderful things we could do, the ministry we could accomplish if everyone kept giving at their level what we could do with that. Because you see, as I said in December, the same things are still true. All of the items that should have been fixed over the years as they broke weren't because we had no money. And so now the things that could have been repaired now need to be replaced. Currently, I need to, re I need to replace 21 rooftop air conditioning units for the school and family life center. They're $3,800 a piece. I have 
six classrooms in the school that still have not had their windows replaced from whenever you did that project. We were short six windows. They're over $2,000 a piece. But even closer to home, look around. Look at the pew you're sitting in. Notice that where your hands go on the edge of the pew, it's a different color than the rest of the pew. We've worn, we've worn away the stain and the varnish over the years. People in the back have to be careful how they stand up because the pews are split. And if they stand up too fast, the pew will snap them on the leg. And if you're lucky enough to do the kneelers back there, you got to be careful because you may get a screw in the knee. Look around. Look, look at our carpet. We have two different colors of carpet. Why is that? And then the older carpet, the gray, is stained to the point where we can't get the stains out anymore. The parish itself, God's house, is falling apart. Now, we celebrate 40 years. This church was built 40 years ago, 2019, 1979. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could refresh and renew and remodel the church in time for our 40th anniversary. But that's a whole nother subject. Think what we could do if everyone just added $5 to your weekly envelope. Think what we could do with just $5. And then think what we could do with $5 more the ministry we could continue to do, the wages that I could give my employees, some of whom haven't had a raise in 10 years. I could pay them a living wage. These are some of the things that keep a pastor up at night, trying to figure out how to do all these things. I'm sure that we have the ability. I'm sure that with prayer and reflection, you will find it in your heart to look on all the things that God has given you over the years and return some of your first fruits so that his gospel and his message may continue to spread from this place. So, to answer the question, what is the state of the parish? The state of our parish is good. As I said, we're able to meet our, to meet our requirements and pay our bills. But really, not much more. We can do better. We continue to spread the good news with the resources we have. Think what we could do with more resources. Thank you.